hit this dish pointer app so you can find the satellite. Tria, you want to be careful pulling this out. You want to grab it by the middle, pull it out easy. You got two bolts right here. Those two bolts are going to go in. Let the screws out. Tighten your screws. Put all your flanges out here. You got four panels, each panel slips into their slots and then connects to each other with these clips. Start from the bottom. I'll try to leave the last one in either of the top spots makes it a little easy. down put your clips move the covers <clears throat> this is power and you'll notice the male and female and letters these line up to the correct ports on the dish A to A, push it in, turn, hear it click. Same thing here, push it in, turn, hear it click. Elbow goes in the top one, RX to RX. Box says TX. Pins on the top prong, match it up. You gotta push it in good and start turning. You want to run the clean power, which is not a generator. If you have a generator, you want to have a, uh, a UPS. Terminal will start up by saying initializing. GPS antenna is here. It's going to need to get its GPS in each no location. First thing it'll do is run through a power on self test. So if there's any problem with your equipment, you're going to find out during boot up. Antenna software upload is just on uploading the software from the base to the antenna. Looks like we've 
gone through every check, we're good. First thing I do is stow it by holding the down button for three seconds. And this will put the terminal into stow. Terminal stowed now. This is the first and last thing you want to do. Terminal say stowed, now we're stowed. Now we're going to go ahead and deploy. I hit the up arrow for three seconds. Deploy activated. Once it pulls down its GPS, it's going to figure out which satellite it needs to connect to. Right now it's uh, lined out, but as soon as we know our GPS, we'll see the correct satellite pop up for the region of the world that you're in. You'll see the transmit and receive frequencies, and it'll initialize the acquisition. This is normal right now. We're just waiting for the GPS, so now we've got it found out that it's in the US and it's going to go to 55 West right now it's got its honing frequency so it's going to start the acquisition process Looks like it went ahead and found uh, some signal. So now what it's going to do is make some light passes, left, right, up, down. It's now uh, solid bars. Wait about another two minutes and we're going to be all in the net. Right now it says MDM, that means modem, I-N-I-T, initializing. Once this goes to net OK, we're going to be ready to get on the Wi-Fi or use any one of these three LAN ports down here, covered by these little rubber things. So any one of these LAN ports, these first three, you can use to get on the internet. You get a static IP address. Now, the service port is the first port over here on the left. And this port right here is gonna be used to access the terminal if we wanna change the Wi-Fi, look at the modem, look at any additional settings. You don't have to do this on an everyday basis, only if you wanna change something in the config.
just locking in. and connected to the Cobham network you can set the encryption and password to whatever you want so we're on the we're on the network we're going to run a quick speed test and remember this is a global system Found it pretty quick, huh? Less than 10 minutes. What you hear there is the fan on the buck. So this whole part of the system, you want to keep shaded if you're in direct sunlight all day long. The internal temperature of this can get up to 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit before it's going to fail. So you need to shade it and cover it. Whatever you got. Palm, That's palm branches. So we're doing a speed test right now. And you can see MRSAT is the service provider. We're testing to a network in Tampa and we're pulling about three and three quarters megabits per second down, which is what we have this terminal provision for. And we're getting about a meg and a half up, which is also what we have the terminal provision for. This is good enough to do a live stream at about 720p. Next, we're gonna flip over to our baby drone. Right here we have the Mavic. DJI. So we're in the DJI app. You have um, some interesting capabilities for live streaming. You're able to live stream to uh, Facebook, Webio, YouTube. QUZ zone, or you can do a custom RTMP stream, which will be to your own private server, encrypted, limited IP access uh, for mission critical applications. Today we're just going to fly. DJI makes it really easy for us to take off, 